In the previous session, we talked about the uh, uh, click gesture recognizer uh, with the use of single click and double click here. Uh, this is part of the mouse event. Today, we are going to implement a subclass of the click gesture, which to support uh, the use of a uh, shift click. It is just like the keyboard event, uh, the way to check uh, for the shift command key is to use the modifier flex. To start with it, we are going to uh, subclass the click gesture recognizer. Here, we are going to create a class uh, and let's call it shift click gesture recognizer. Uh, within the shift click gesture recognizer, we are going to pass the mouse down event only if the shift modifier is uh, pressed as well. Um, we first override the mouse down uh, event, and then I'm going to check whether uh, the shift command is available by the use of. Uh, by checking event.modifierFlex.moreValue and use a bit operation to see whether NSEventModifierFlex.ShiftKeyMask is available. If it is there, it would be um, the result of the bit operation would be the shift uh, key itself. If shift is available, I will pass the mouse down event up the responder chain. Otherwise, it will uh, do nothing. Like this. And then uh, in the real controller, I'm going to create a new uh, Shift click gesture recognizer object. At the moment, you may not have the target and action uh, initializer. We can still uh, do it through this uh, shift click dot target equal to self shift click dot um, action equal to uh, the method we are going to call and then add the gesture recognizer to the view like this and also I need to define the method of shift click And this would be the type of uh, shift click gesture recognizer. Simply print it for now. Try running the application. So now if I click shift and then click, then shift click will be detected. In order to get back the um, target action uh, initializer, I could make a change in the gesture recognizer by uh, overriding the in method on target action. And then uh, since I will be overriding this, I need to add the override keyword and then call the super init on the target action so it just pass through now xcode may have a warning uh, as you need to add the init coder uh, for the initializer as well um, we can just keep it uh, with the uh, default setting because uh, the init target action is what we need. Now I can go back to real controller and change it to target action. 
initializer and this would look like just uh, as before and I could run the application and still get the same result that's it for today talk to you soon